Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our public update here at Oz Cyclone Chasers today, the 17th of November 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Okay, folks, so this is what we're all uh, watching intently at the moment. This is a tropical low that has developed to the east of the Solomon Islands, has tracked west and is now located pretty well just south of the Solomons. Uh, it is spinning around, uh, so there is a, certainly a rotation to it, vorticity to it at the surface, so no doubt about that. Uh, it does. It is suffering a little bit of wind shear, but that will abate over the next day or two, and we should see some strengthening of this system at some stage over the next day or two. Uh, but overall into the future, we're starting to look at most computer models showing us that it will weaken. Now, it is expected to move towards Queensland. There's uh, almost very little doubt about that into the medium term. Uh, it's just a matter of how strong the system will be. Will it just be a low or a trough washing out and, and tracking north across the far northern Coral Sea? Will it be a stronger tropical low or tropical, uh, or tropical cyclone? Now, that is the million dollar question and that is the one that we can't answer for you just yet but we can show you what some of the computer models are showing us so first up, I'm going to show you probably what is the most accurate worldwide model at the moment, especially when it comes to Australian tropical cyclones this is the European ECMWF deterministic forecast chart now we can see this low located just here to the southeast of Solomon Islands at 10 a.m. today 10 a.m. tomorrow it continues to track in a southwesterly direction deepens just a little as we go through to 10 a.m. on Thursday we can see the track here directly to the southwest uh, guided by a fairly strong ridge here in place at the surface to mid levels uh, underneath the system so that's not going to allow the system to track away to the southeast as we move on and head off to uh, to Friday morning we can see the system getting close to cyclone intensity there at 999 hectopascals very strong pressure gradient which means very strong winds to the south of the system not much happening to the north of the system so this will be a lopsided if it does become a cyclone it will be a a very lopsided cyclone with most of the uh, most of the effects the wind the rain all of that will be located south of the center of the system then there will be very little uh, very little mischief happening north of it as we head through you can see a very sharp acceleration here on the computer model which makes me a little dubious as to the validity of this model once we get from Friday into Saturday you can see here a very very quick rapid southwesterly motion straight into the coast here around the Bowen Proserpine Mackay area uh, on the Saturday and into Sunday and by Sunday morning you can see the system has already made landfall now interestingly the system makes landfall as a, a very very weak category one cyclone a very lopsided and weak category one cyclone or a simply a tropical low now this is only one computer model I'm going to show you the other one the the alternative scenario from the GFS the GFS remains quite uninterested in this system and, and keeps it as a fairly weak tropical low throughout the forecast before washing it out into a trough system. Now that resultant trough system does continue west across the Coral Sea and if we were to push this a little bit forward and I'll just use the, uh, non, the not, mo, not the most recent update, I'll use the 10 o'clock update from this morning just to show you that this trough system does push west uh, across the Coral Sea but it really does weaken out as it does so. So I would be very surprised to see too much weather if the uh, GFS forecast model comes off. So you can see here the resultant trough ends up hitting the coast uh, probably somewhere between Cairns and Bowen and the resultant rainfall here uh, looking at somewhere around that uh, 25 to 125 millimeters across that coastal strip uh, where it does eventually make landfall and you can see then it just washes out into the medium term interestingly in the longer term we're also looking at another low developing out here well east of the Solomons that one won't be coming or shouldn't I won't say won't shouldn't be coming towards Australia uh, but it may intensify into a cyclone as well in the longer term but folks the all eyes are on this system at the moment and there are very uh, there are certainly quite varied opinions as to where this will go if it does make landfall, it's expected to make landfall sometime on Saturday or Sunday this weekend. And it doesn't matter which particular uh, option you decide uh, is more valid, whether it's a cyclone, whether it's a low, whether it's a trough, that time of arrival should be fairly similar in all three options. So we should be looking at a Saturday or Sunday landfall of either the trough, the low, 
or the cyclone, depending on what it is. Now, it look, if it is going to be a cyclone by the time it hits the coast, it's going to be a very weak one. The more likelihood, is, the, the obviously the more favoured scenario here is that it will be a tropical low or a tropical trough. If it's a low, all of the weather will be to the south of the system. If it's a trough, all of the weather will be located uh, on that trough line. So uh, that trough line could extend uh, many, many kilometres from north to south. And so therefore, we could be seeing a little bit more widespread activity if the system hits as a trough. So you can see here, we're seeing some pretty good rain all through from around about just north of Cairns, all the way down to just north of Mackay. Fairly good rainfall from the system if it hits as a trough. Obviously, if it hits as a low or a cyclone, conditions are going to be a little bit more centralised, a little bit more focused, and probably a little bit more rain with the system if it maintains some sort of intensity. If we take an ensemble view here, so we're now looking at 50 different computer models, uh, 50, sorry, models of the same computer model, but 50 variations of it. And we can see here that overall, the computer model does weaken this system around about early Friday. As we go to early Saturday, you can see the resultant trough coming towards the Queensland coast with only a couple of the computer models showing this little light blue tinge showing us that uh, the couple of the computer models maintain the low pressure center. Most of them have washed this out into a trough. And I guess that's the best possible scenario, I think, for, for this section of coastline between Cairns and Mackay, which has not received that much rainfall in the past few months, the best thing that could possibly happen out of this is a trough, uh, which will give a fairly widespread moderate, uh, moderate falls of rain. So if we take a look at some of the ensemble guidances here, we can see this is the CMC ensemble, which tends to be a little bit all over the shop. So you can see just how wide the variety of options is here. If the system doesn't intensify at all over the next 24 to 48 hours, well then it's just going to be a very weak trough and it's just going to continue west and hit PNG. And that's what the Bureau of Meteorology's access model is showing us. Uh, if the system does intensify slightly uh, and then uh, washes out back into a trough or low, uh, it's more than likely going to hit, as I mentioned, that Cairns uh, or even Cooktown to Mackay region, uh, probably more so the Cooktown to Bowen region. If the system intensifies a little bit further in the next 24 to 48 hours into a tropical cyclone, then we would be looking at the system making landfall more around the Ingham to uh, Ingham to Rockhampton area. So there are a lot of variables in that, but that is our best guess at the moment based on the computer models. Now look, the other thing that's throwing this whole thing into out of whack is the fact that this system is very small. Computer models are notoriously terrible at picking up small tropical cyclones particularly more so the intensity of them rather than the direction of movement but uh, overall they are they are much weaker when dealing with uh, tropical cyclones that are small compared to tropical cyclones that are large that's why we're much more inclined to look at the european model than these other models because the european model has the highest resolution of all of the global computer models what we can see when we look at it in, on satellite uh, and, and look at it a little bit closer on satellite, you can definitely see it's trying to build convection. You can also see that some of that convection is being sheared away. It does have good outflow across the uh, across the northern and southern uh, semicircles, so it does have reasonable outflow, uh, but it is being sheared away, and it is just struggling to actually get convection over the centre. At the moment, it's more of a trophy-type low as opposed to a uh, very closed circulation. So you can see here, it's, it's really really a, a trophy type low. I guess the center of circulation is somewhere in here, but uh, but it is a reasonably elongated area of convection. What we want to see if we want to see this into a cyclone is that needs to tighten up and needs to tighten up probably in the next 48 hours. Otherwise, its window of opportunity is gone for intensification. We delve into this in a lot more detail for our subscribers. So if you want to know a lot more detail and you want to help uh, support what we do, uh, please become a subscriber on our website, ozcyclonechases.com.au. It costs $34.95 a year. And you get the entertainment value of watching us chase as well as the informational value. And in that, we'll be talking about in the morning update tomorrow, we'll be talking about wind shear and how it will increase and decrease over time uh, for this system. And we'll also talk about sea surface temperatures and uh, dry air possibilities for this system uh, in the morning update. But that goes above and beyond the scope for this update. So today's rainfall, folks, was all around coastal Queensland, really, and they're a little bit on the northwestern top end of the region and a little bit in the north Kimberley and possibly some isolated storms also in the inland Pilbara. As we go to Wednesday, we can see things stabilise across most of the Queensland coast, just those favoured areas in the southeasterly stream, you know, Townsville northwards or north of Townsville, I should say, um, and also that Mackay coastline 
could be seeing some isolated showers as well. Possibly some isolated thunderstorms up here in the Western uh, Peninsula and also some very isolated convective activity across the Western Top End. Very dry, stable air coming into the uh, Top End of the Territory over the next few days. Also some uh, isolated showers and storms in a line here on the trough line across WA as well, the inland parts of the Pilbara and Gascoyne. On Thursday, uh, we continue to see fairly stable pattern across Queensland. Just some very isolated activity here in the uh, North Tropical Coast. Also some possibility of an increase here as these easterlies come across the Gulf and pick up a bit of moisture across the Arnhem District and also the possibility of uh, very weak shower and storm activity here on the western uh, western parts of the top end coast. Nothing happening for the Kimberley at that stage, very dry air in there and a lot of that activity here across the inland Pilbara has gone as well on Thursday. On Friday though, uh, the western top end of the Territory does start to see a slight increase in activity um, but we do see this, uh, you can see this colouring coming in now from the Coral Sea on Friday and then things get quite interesting on Saturday. There's a number of different scenarios and once the computer models start to lock on to which scenario is going to happen you'll start to see these rainfall totals increase dependent on which scenario comes uh, to fruition or, or looks like coming to fruition as we go later on in the forecast period so expect to see these uh, these colors uh, get a little duller uh, so it's sort of looking instead of 15 to 25 I think there's a fair estimate there that even if it's a trough we're, we're going to see a trough on those easterlies uh, particularly if it hits north tropical uh, north tropical Queensland or central coast of Queensland does tend to produce over 50 millimetres. So I think you'll start to see these uh, these colours start to consolidate once the computer models start to figure out what's going to happen. And that could take at least another couple of days, I would imagine. Thanks for watching this update, folks. We'll have another one for you now because there is a tropical low that could form into a cyclone in the Australian area of responsibility. We will have our next update for you for the public on Thursday. Subscribers, you will have updates tomorrow morning and Thursday morning. Uh, Non-subscribers, you'll have another update on Thursday night. We'll talk again then.